Okay, lab one is called the pendulum. As you can see, you're going to build a pendulum, and we're interested in measuring the angle of displacement of the pendulum with respect to time. So theta versus time. So our goal is to understand the relationship, but what is the sensor that we use to take that measurement, and what does the instrumentation look like? What you see here is the shaft of our pendulum that is connected to a potentiometer. A potentiometer is basically a circuit element that's a resistor, and the middle pin of the resistor essentially splits the potentiometer into two resistors so that the sum of the two resistors equals some constant value. So this functions like a voltage divider. Shaft. Rotating the shaft of the potentiometer is essentially moving the position of that middle pin. So what does the instrumentation look like? Well, we're going to use a very simple circuit. It's going to be a DC voltage supply, and we're going to take that from the O-scope and supply it to the potentiometer. And the potentiometer, functioning as a voltage divider, will essentially be our sensor to sense the angle of the pendulum. So again, as the shaft rotates, essentially what this middle pin is doing is moving through the resistor that is the potentiometer. So what that's going to give to us is, as we monitor V out from the potentiometer, we're going to see that the voltage will vary with uh, time in a way that we kind of expect. It's going to be sort of a dissipating um, pendular motion. Now, we're getting pretty close here. We have time on this axis. We have time on this axis. Our goal is to measure essentially theta versus time, but we have V out versus time. So we're going to turn to our friend mathematics to find a way to translate the V out um, into theta. Um, and so once we have a relationship between V uh, out and theta, we can substitute oops, for V out, we can substitute theta, and then get our measured quantity theta versus time. So this is called calibration, and essentially what we're going to do is have you measure the V out as a function of theta. So you're going to develop a calibration curve for your instrumentation. Okay, let's review here. So we are interested in measuring the angular displacement theta as a function of time. So our goal is to measure theta versus time, and we are going to sense it using a potentiometer. So this potentiometer basically is essentially a voltage divider, and it will break up the resistance into two different resistors. And the middle pin is um, moves with the shaft of the potentiometer. So we put that inside of our basic circuit as a sensor, and uh, it, the potentiometer senses the position, the angular position, by having the shaft, as it rotates, move from one extreme to the other on that linear uh, resistor that is inside the potentiometer. Now, what that does for us is it gives us a V out versus time that essentially uh, represents the angular motion of the pendulum. Now we're very close to our measurement goal. We, have, we want theta versus time. We have V out versus time. And so we need a way to transform that value to what we want. So we use mathematics. We develop a calibration curve of V out versus theta. And we substitute for V out theta into the V out value and get theta versus time. From sensing to measurement, uh, we're going to do this over and over again to go around this little circle. We'll restart with a sensor. We use instrumentation and mathematics to convert to the measurement that we want. Um, and stick around at the end of this video if you want the nitty-gritty details on it. I'm jumping around here a bit, but let's just kind of finish off. Now, uh, to set up your device, you're going to go ahead and clamp that to the edge of the table. You'll see here that I've clamped it too far. Uh, and you'll just press the pendulum onto the shaft of the potentiometer. And you want to make sure that the, the flattened 
uh, portion of the shaft is facing up. Okay, one more time. Let's look at in detail. We want to measure theta versus time, so the angular displacement of the pendulum, but we have a sensor that will give us, with a circuit, voltage versus time. So the time axis is the same, but we want to get from voltage to theta. To do that, we could look in detail. We could look at the relationship between voltage and resistance of the sensor, and then resistance and theta in the sensor. Um, and then if we had the voltage data, we could take each data point and then convert it. Let's say, we don't know what these relationships look like, I'm just drawing these lines. We can just convert each data point using these other curves uh, to get from voltage to the theta domain. So we could do that for every point on this curve. And this is basically what you did with, uh, you know, measuring your heart rate, that you start with some way of sensing um, the physical quantity, and then you kind of work through the instrumentation to get to your measurement goal. Okay, you've seen this before. This is basically kind of a, a fancy way of converting from one domain to another. So we start out in the VT domain. Um, we can get from the sensor VR and theta versus R, and that could take us over to theta versus time. Now, there is a shortcut. If we had V versus theta, we could skip through the R, and that's what we're going to do in our lab. But just to kind of show you how this works out, it's a little bit like conversion. We have voltage per time. We know from Ohm's law we can get voltage per resistance, and then from the sensor we can get theta per resistance and that gives us theta versus time.